Today on City Cash Chicago, we're getting you in the Valentine's Day spirit with another classic Chicago rom com, arguably the smoothest of them all. As part of our regular series, Reviews, Dissecting Chicago Films, we're headed to 1997 to talk about the one and only Love Jones. And just a heads up, there's movies rated R, so you definitely gonna hear some steamy scenes. It's Thursday, February 9th. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is What Chicago's Talking About. The couple at the center of Love Jones is Darius Love Hall, played by, of course, Lorenz Tate, and Nina Mosley, played by Nia Long. Darius is a poet, Nia is a photographer, and they meet at a spoken word night at this cool club where Darius ends up performing, and that's where the back and forth of their love story begins. Uh, I'm going to be real. This is a black classic movie, uh, and it really captures the artistic side of Chicago, and the soundtrack is fire. We have been doing this series for a few months, Chicago Reviews, where we look at some Chicago classic movies that are set here, and we break down not only how the movie is held up as its age, but some uh, superlative categories, our favorite scenes, best romantic moment. And today, I'm joined by Zephanie Battle, who is a teacher in Maryland, but CityCast first met her as a student at the School of the Art Institute. And Zephanie, you actually did your thesis on Love Jones. Welcome to CityCast Chicago. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me wh where did this idea come from and, and what exactly did your thesis explore? Yeah, so the thesis came from just my own personal uh, love for the movie. Um, my mother, um, it's her favorite movie. She almost named me Nina when I was born. Uh, the movie came out <laughs> in uh, 97. I was born in 98. So, you know, hey, the love was on the brain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, um, yeah. So growing up, uh, she was a single mother. So it was really just me and her. And so we bonded over that love for that movie. The 90s is home to dozens on dozens of black classic movies, right? We talking Friday. We talking Juice. We talking Stella's Got a Groove Back, right? It, th the list goes on and on, right? Poetic Justice. Why is Love Jones your mother's favorite movie and now, in some ways, one of your favorite movies? So for her, um, it, was, it was the vibe that the friends were having, that friend group. It was seeing Nina be able to be independent and do her own thing in that artistic and creative way that she had these are young young creatives in this movie and you know that it related to her for how she wanted to see um her life go so really my argument is just how basically underappreciated this movie is in the grand scheme of not what black cinema is but it is missing in the grand scheme of, the grand scheme excuse me of cinema itself when we're talking about the greatest love movies of all time love jones is not in there we have when harry met sally which i make in my argument that kind of a twist on if you think about it a little bit i go into it a little bit but you know those movies that were <laughs> that were popping out at the time with these you know boy meets girls because it's so crucial to the black community it's like why hasn't a lot of other people seen it, you know, worldwide or even internationally? No, oh, that's a Everybody great can point. See, see this movie and see a little bit of themselves in it. You know, when people mean state classic cinema, what they mean in America is white movies, right? Movies for white audiences. And so many of these black, these, these you know, classic movies in the black community, especially Love Jones, they didn't end up performing the way, you know, director, writer, Theodore Witcher often talks about. He was shocked that this movie didn't resonate across two different releases in the spring and the summer of 1997. Um, I got to bring in our super producer, Simone Alisea, who's going to help kind of lead this conversation. But Simone, this isn't one of the movies that you grew up watching, right? So what was it like watching Love Jones for the first time for you? I was really mad that I'd never seen it before. I was really mad <laughs> that that somehow this had escaped my uh, my my consciousness and my experience. I we're going to talk about all the reasons why we all love this movie, uh, but suffice it to say, I was very pleased okay. by the end of it. So, Simone, walk us through some of these categories to, to really make sure our listeners who haven't seen it uh, know why they need to head over to HBO Max or steal somebody's HBO Max password to watch it. For sure, for sure. Zephanie, Jacoby, I want to hear what you guys think 
is the most rewatchable scene in Love Jones. Zephanie, I want to start with you since you've probably rewatched it more than any of us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Darius's poem in the beginning, The Blues for Nina, that mm-hmm. is just, just such a everybody gets it everybody is ready when he comes on and it's like ooh, we you know they be ready to, to hear them some darius love hall lorenz tate because rather than deal with the fallacy of this dry ass reality i'd rather dance and romance your sweet ass in a wet dream mm. <laughs> who am i <laughs> well they all call me brother to the night and right now i'm the blues in your left thigh Trying to become the funk in your right. Is that all right? Oh, that's all right, baby. That's all right. And I think people just really, really liked that one just for how smooth he was and how creative it was. And some people mm-hmm. liked that he was a little bit raunchy with it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. He, he, so, he, he was about it. He, he, he really jumped he right into it. it. The uh-huh. innuendos was on the, on the nose. <laughs> Nobody warned me how steamy this movie was going to be. Yeah, <laughs> the la- they pulled no punches in the language. Like, I, this is not a movie you can go rewatch on TNT or TBS because the way they gonna have to just pull out all of the, the the adult language, let's just call it that. This is a really cool scene because it's early on in the movie, right? At this point, um, uh, Nina is out with her friend Josie. They're at this spoken word club, the sanctuary. Uh, Darius and his friends are out. And then he gets up there and his idea of flirting with Nina is basically to perform this sort of sex laden poem about his desire to get to know her, get to know her. Yes. And I was also going to say, I don't know if maybe Jacoby, you were going to touch on this part. But the the cab scene with Josie and Nina when she comes that's my back. favorite. Okay, that's yeah, my most she rewatchable comes back scene from having uh, you know yes. relations and the the night with Darius and such. Yes, you know, and her my- and Josie are in the cab and she's relaying how the night went and uh-huh. how the passion between them and the desire. <laughs> you fucked up, didn't you? <laughs> and you weren't even gonna tell me. You ain't slick. You can't keep that kind of shit from me. <laughs> I can't believe you fucked him on the first day. We ain't got to get into how Darius uh, finds out where Nina is. Because this man basically, it's clearly the 90s. He get her phone number, get her address off a of check, and then he just show up. And because he, right, because it's a rom-com, we sort of just look over the stalkery, creepy vibes of rom-coms, and we push it. And, and they end up going out. They they both fulfill the, uh, their desire at that moment. And so this scene in the cab between Nina and Josie, who's played by Lisa Nicole Carson, uh, who is one of the funniest people in the movie, hands down. There's that playful language between these two black women where if, if you're not in the conversation, you would think that Josie is judging Nina, right? No, she's trying to find out the details. She's exactly. She wants to probe and dig. How, she how was it? How did on. it go? And again, it, it shows you just how raunchy the movie is. <laughs> what, what Nina said, she was like... It was like his dick just talked to me. Theodore Richard talks about holding the camera on Josie's face for a long period of time. And Josie's just staring and she just goes, What'd it say? Just... Nina. Ooh, mm. Also, that, that split second where they cut to the cab driver's right. eyes in the, the rearview rear mirror because yeah. he's listening <laughs> And so it was good to see this conversation from the late 90s between, you know, the chemistry and the scene. They really seem like best friends in this scene, but it seems like a very sex positive conversation, you know, for a lot of 90s movies that, you know, the 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 star women characters seem to be reduced and just sort of be falling into the plot. Uh, this felt like one, especially in this conversation, highlighting it that really showed the autonomy uh, in Nina's character. And, it, and again, it's just hilarious. <laughs> Have y'all seen these egg prices? Yeah, I'm talking about $7 a carton. And then we got rising rents on top of that. It's just, it's just too much. It makes you wonder if you're better off trying to buy a home or at least getting your questions answered. 
Before I heard the How to Buy a Home podcast, I didn't even know what questions I should be asking. And host David Sedoni can get you the answers. Like, yes, your monthly mortgage might be cheaper than rent. Or no, you probably don't need to put 20% down. You can ask David those questions directly at howtobuyahome.com. Take advantage of this free resource and start listening to the How to Buy a Home podcast wherever you listen. Visit howtobuyahome.com and make this the last year you rent. The reason we're talking about this is because we've got Valentine's Day coming up. This is a romance at its core. And we want to talk about the most romantic scene in Love Jones. Jacoby, I'm going to kick it back to you. What was what do you think was the most romantic scene? First, I got to give a nod to what I thought was the coolest, somewhat romantic shot. And it only happens for a small moment. And it's when they are on the bike together and that quick picture of uh, of Nina looking back with her glasses on. But I have to say the most romantic scene is when they're dancing to John Coltrane and Duke Ellington's In a Sentimental Mood. Hey, Nina. Yeah. Uh, you mind if I play something for you? No, not at all. Throughout the movie, Nina and Darius had this connection through music and dancing, right? One of their first dates, they're dancing, you know, very close together at this club with one another. There's another scene we're going to talk about later where... They're where, dancing very close together. They're grinding. Nah, they, let's, they, let's they, 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 nah they're in the club juking, for real, for real, right? They, their first yeah. date, they in the club juking, right? But this one was one of the most intimate. They're in this home together, sort of listening to this record, uh, dancing with one another. And it's followed up with this montage where they're with Darius. Darius's friends, they're running through the park together, they're listening to poems together, and and really went to show, again, the way we think about intimacy and closeness, right? And so this idea of sex being the the you know the, the ultimate form of intimacy and vulnerability and romance. I love the way that they sort of flip that narrative. Uh, and it just becomes a part of their story. Zephanie, what was the the most romantic moment in the movie? Yeah, honestly, I was going with Jacoby's right there. But if I had to pick <laughs> another one, I think it would definitely be the ending. Um Nina coming back from Chicago in the rain. after they had, you know oh. Yeah, in the rain crazy who what black girl is doing that i don't know she did not she did not care about her hair she was in the rain about three four times in this movie but that, that's like the thing of it right it's just like i don't care about anything else we we just want to talk about this moment right you know just after she's coming back from chicago there it's one year later they haven't seen each other they've kind of broken up at this point and she um tries to uh, see if she can find Darius at the um the spoken word club and she reads this poem um for him hoping that he's going to be there she doesn't see him but she reads the poem anyway he runs out the door after he sees her leave the club and they run out in the rain and then they go under a bridge and he's explaining all of his feelings and how he felt when she left and they're they're going back and forth on no it was my mistake no it was your mistake no like but we're gonna we want to make this work together you always want what you want when you want it why is everything so urgent with you let me tell you something this here right now at this very moment is all that matters to me i love you That's urgent like a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Oh. What a oh. what a bar. The, the, the movie is chalk with bars. Shout out to Theodore Rit- Witcher. You know, while I didn't love all of the poetry throughout the music uh, throughout the movie, right? Not every single poem landed on me. There were plenty of uh just lines, pieces of dialogue. But yeah, that that ending scene and them sort of confessing their love for each other. And again, classic romantic comedy fashion uh was pulled off very well. We can't talk about uh, this movie without talking about the role Chicago plays, of course. Uh, Zephanie, I'm going to kick it back to you. What What do you think was the the most Chicago scene in this movie? There's so many. Okay, I think would be Darius running through Union Station. Oh, yes. Trying to get to Nina before she leaves um, for the first time. 
Another classic, classic rom com trope running through the train I've station. I've run through Union to Station your too. It's, it's so many levels and dips and turns. Jacoby, what was the most Chicago scene for you? That's only one answer for me the stepping scene. When she mm-hmm. said, I was just wondering if you could step. Next thing you know, the Godfather soul is playing hot pants in the background. You got the coordinated moves, you got the outfits, you watching Nina and Darius get down. Uh, and what's funny here is Lorenz Tate got that bounce in him. He got that Chicago bounce in him as he's moving. And then them, you know, outside of Buckingham Fountain. Um, I, I just thought that was a, a great Chicago scene. That was actually going to be my pick for most romantic scene. Uh, <laughs> there's also this moment where Darius is kind of playing like he can't dance. Like he, mm-hmm. he kind of looks a little awkward. And Lorenz Tate has perfected this like earnest smirk that just melts your heart. And then they go and they dance. And uh, as, a, as a dancer myself, I got to say like that. Oh, that really. I was just like, I was ready. I was ready to go. I was like, all right, let's do it. We're in it. We're in it. To win Stephanie, it. Simone and I took uh, stepping lessons for the podcast a while back. And uh, it don't look nothing like that scene. Let's just let's just leave it there. It don't look nothing no, like that scene. No, and I the, did too for my All thesis. white, all blue. I did too. I, I tried to find something and I was, I was stepping on the instructor's toes the whole time. I was tripping over my own feet. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I want to I want to ask a question that might spark a little controversy. I feel like it might. You know, uh Zephanie, you mentioned uh, a blues for Nina Darius's poem that he performs in the beginning of the film and then of course we also talked about mentioned that Nina performs a poem for Darius toward the end. I'm remembering water that glows in the dawn. The motion tumbled in earth. Life hidden in mounds. I am dancing a bright beam of light. I am remembering love. I am curious, who, whose poem do you think was better, Nina or, or Darius? Stephanie, what do, you, what do you think? Okay. Um... I want to go with the honest answer here. And I would like to say that um, they cannot be compared. I don't, I am not saying that like one is better than the other. I'm saying that like Darius is a very seasoned writer and poet. And you have Nina who, you know, that was kind of her the first time basically being on the stage and actually doing it. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, if we're going for the most popular you know, the most popular um, opinion, it would most likely be Darius's. But I mean, you got to give you got to give credit where credit is due to Nina because she put her heart and soul onto it. She, you know, got on that stage and did what she needed to do, even not even seeing Darius. She just spoke her heart. Jacoby, what do you think? I love that in some small classic form of like open mic spoken word that they both was bad in their own way. Right. Yes. <laughs> they were both bad yes. uniquely. Right. Nina's clearly because of her lack of, you know, you know, ability at that point it wasn't something that she was used to. She even had her notes up there with her. And Darius's was just uh, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It was a lot. It was a, it, it was, was it was extra. It was but no, extra. no, no. It's, uh, uh, I can't think of it. Pretentious. There it is. <laughs> it, it was pretend you just knew who he was from the beginning of the movie. He just made it very clear. This is who I am. But I mean, his is better in, in terms of just the way they're put together. But but they are both, they both have aged uh very interestingly, in my opinion. I I do like Nina's last line, I am remembering love. That I was like, oh, okay, I kind of see where this is going now. I really like that. I'm really curious. Have either of you ever had a poem written for you or performed for you? Yes. Y- yes. yes. <laughs> Very quiet yeses. But but it is as embarrassing as Nina makes it to be, really? right? It you you know if you write me a poem, you send me a poem. That's one thing. You perform a poem in front of a large group of people that is about me, the tumult of us, the chaos of us, even the the sublime of us. That's mad embarrassing, G. So this movie was made in 1997. Now 2023. Curious, uh, do you think? that Love Jones deserves a reboot. 
either a Netflix show, HBO Max original, whatever the case may be. And if so, uh, paint that picture for me. What kind of reboot or b- reboot are you imagining here, uh, Jacoby? That's a good question. I actually think it needs a if it's going to have one a show reboot because just the plot of the movie gives you so much room to work with. Like by the end, they have to do a one year later flash forward. Nina's been in New York the entire time. Um, You know, there's a lot of montage that sort of sum up connection and dates that could be acted out over the movie. A lot of this stuff still felt very fresh, right? The, the, the brothers in the movie trying to play it too cool. The cynicism about love. Nina didn't feel outdated uh, as a protagonist. The question of, are we dating? Are we talking? Are we in a community? A relationship, right? The pursuit of creativity, all of these still feel very real to Chicago right now and, and to my own experiences. For sure. I read a review that said something like, you know, Love Jones explores what a situationship is before we started using that term. Uh, uh, Zephanie, a uh, reboot for Love Jones? <laughs> Definitely not. No. classic where a classic could be and I understand Jacoby's point that just there's just like a lot of space that can still be looked through and can be explored but I think that just the tightness of where all the details were it's like the ending was where it needed to be just Hmm. like you know we're gonna figure it out and whatever comes that's what it is Stephanie Battle, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Love Jones expert here uh, to talk about this this classic Chicago film. Thanks so much for joining CityCast Chicago today. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you so much. That was really fun. Before I let you go, a little bit of news, y'all. The healthcare giant CVS has bought the Chicago-based Oak Street Health clinics that are known for treating Medicare patients for $10.6 billion. This is important because if you remember, we did an entire episode about their Deerfield-based rival Walgreens spending billions to add primary care clinics to some of its stores. A couple corrections from earlier this week. We accidentally excluded Andrew Schneider as one of the candidates in the first ward automatic race. Plus, in the first ward race, Proco Joe Moreno was charged and pleaded guilty to one DUI, not two. Sorry for the errors. And some good news to get you through. I'm performing tonight at the new I.O. Theater in Goose Island as part of the Armando Experience. I'll be telling a few stories while the improv group creates sketches to go along with my performance. It's something completely new for me, and I'm excited, but I'm going to need y'all to pull up and, uh, you know, enjoy it with me. As always, we appreciate you for listening. Vote CityCast Chicago, the best podcast and newsletter in the city as part of the Chicago Reader's Best of 2022 list. Join us tomorrow when we sit down with Tony Hill from The Tribe and Maxwell Evans from Block Club Chicago to look back on some key stories from the week. I'll talk to you then. Peace. Have a great rest of your day. Have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye. Peace. (laughs) Is that your class? Are they clapping? Oh my God, why am I not recording right now? Oh, I'm so upset. <laughs> I'm so mad. Damn, not you stopping it early. They gave her a round of applause.